everybody welcome back to my channel this is Jenny and I will be sharing with you the importing tutorial in English version the Taglish version by the way is also available on the channel just in case you wanted to check that out you can find that through our importing tutorial playlist by the way I am from the Philippines and I will be sharing based on my knowledge and based on my experience on how I do the importing I am not an expert just so you know so you may check other resources as well just in case there are things that you need to know more before we start our importing tutorial i would just like to extend a great news to everybody who is watching now who is supporting the channel that i will be sharing suppliers from alibaba very soon with the sample of their products and that will be up on this channel so make sure that you subscribe you turn on the notification bell so you won't miss that opportunity because that might help you start your own business i mean trigger you to start a business give you an idea that maybe that product or that supplier can collaborate with you and expand your business as well so let's start this importing tutorial with our step number one of course if you wanted to import via the alibaba platform you have to find a product then a supplier it's actually great if you already have an idea what to import i mean let's say you've done your research that's very good but in case you don't have any idea yet then that's not a problem at all i'm saying that based on experience because i remember when i first used the alibaba platform my intention is just to get a supplier of baby diapers and i was able to do that after a few months of learning the importing process but to share with you what happened next i was able to get an idea and import multiple winning products just because of browsing believe it or not i was able to get the idea because i browsed through the alibaba platform maybe that's not an expert advice to say but again i am sharing based on my experience and it worked for me and that can work for you as well you can simply register and create your account for free on alibaba platform in finding a product and a supplier on alibaba you can use the search tab this is as easy as how we do our online shopping like we just need to enter the product name keywords or any relevant words about the product that we are looking for we also have here the image search this is one of the feature on alibaba that you can maximize in the case that you don't know the product name all you have to do is upload a picture of the product that you are looking for and then last but not the least is the RFQ or the request for quotation. If you are not fond of the manual process of searching, then RFQ might be the solution for you. All you have to do is fill out the RFQ form, provide all the details like if you are looking for a customized product or maybe you are looking for a ready-to-ship item, just put all the details about the product that you are looking for so the supplier can bid accordingly because of course they will just depend on what you have provided but still you have to remember that everything can still be negotiated we are just on the step number one let's now proceed with our step number two in the importing tutorial which is about finding reliable suppliers on alibaba through the supplier assessment if you are planning to import very soon or in the future please do not skip this step yes that's how important the supplier assessment is because we don't want to get scammed i mean as a business owner as much as possible we wanted to really minimize our risk we wanted to avoid stress and any disappointments during the transaction and assessing the supplier will definitely help and you have to know that having a good supplier can help you succeed Whatever business are you planning to get into? This is how I do the assessment whenever I import a product through the Alibaba platform. The first thing that I do is the basic, of course, communicate to your supplier. Ask them the right question. Aside from checking their profiles, checking their information on the Alibaba, this is a good way on how to assess them. 
Because by asking questions, you would know if they are accommodating to their potential customer. Are they good in providing details that you are asking for? Are they replying immediately to you or are they replying after a week? Are they collaborative? Are they easy to communicate with? Those things can be answered by just asking them questions. And uh, can also add trust me, you, if like you have a good communication here, with them, another the transaction will be easier. Okay. Aside from what I mentioned, okay. I also like to ask them the quality of the product, to send me the video sample of those products that I am looking for, the pricing, the minimum order requirement to get the best price. This is not the negotiation part at all. This is just the initial communication to the suppliers and you would know if they really good in entertaining their potential customer if they can answer these questions even if uh, they, you are just inquiring to them. I feel like this is very important because you wanted a smooth transaction, an easy transaction all throughout your importing process. Another way to assess the supplier is through their supplier ratings and reviews. I'm sure you are very much familiar with this. Especially those people that loves online shopping. Same thing to Alibaba, they allow buyers to rate the sellers and the products. So by going through these ratings and reviews, you would at least get an insights about the product quality and the performance of the seller. But take note, you need to remember that not all reviews are genuine. Unfortunately, in Alibaba, scammers may create fake reviews to manipulate the ratings. So just be careful on that. But still, the ratings and the reviews can help you. Additional way to assess the supplier is through their badge. This will help you know what steps the suppliers took to prove that they are a trusted partner. For them to get those badge, there are requirements, certification, approval, and even payment needed. So right now, you will notice three badge that might be present to your potential suppliers. So you will see the gold supplier badge. So when you see this badge, they are Alibaba members that have been verified as business with commercial and industrial capabilities. Of course, they can surely accommodate high volume quantity of order. And if I remember correctly, you have to pay for a membership just to get the gold supplier badge. And then next is the verified seller badge. So these are the supplier whose company profile, management, production capabilities, process have been assessed, certified, and inspected by third-party institutions. So if you are going to check their profile on the Alibaba platform, you would see different certification. And that's the process that they go through to become a verified seller on Alibaba. And then the Trade Assurance Supplier Badge. This is highly recommended for those beginners and importing process. For me, I've been importing for 5 years now but my practice is still making sure that the supplier that I am transacting with has the Trade Assurance Supplier Badge. Why? Because this will protect my money and my order throughout the importing process. So that's how the Trade Assurance Work. So if you would like to have peace of mind while waiting for your imports, I highly suggest to just check on the suppliers with Trade Assurance Badge. Actually, you can filter those suppliers with this badge so you would not be tempted to go to a supplier with maybe lower pricing but doesn't have any Trade Assurance Badge. So just a tip coming from my end because for me, peace of mind and making sure that my money is safe, my order is safe, is my priority during importing. Last but not the least, to assess the supplier is through the sample orders. So this is one way to assess if they are reliable, if the quality of the product is actually reliable by asking a sample order. Don't hesitate, don't be shy to ask for a free sample. Most of the suppliers on Alibaba that I have been transacting with, they are very generous in giving a free sample. But of course, I need to shoulder the shipping cost and that's fine for me. Especially if I'm aiming to purchase a high volume quantity. This is how I do the supplier assessment whenever I try to find a new product to import here in the Philippines. We are now at step number 3 of our importing tutorial. And we are now at our negotiation part. So after we assess our potential suppliers, the next step is 
the negotiation. And these are the things that I mostly negotiate whenever I import products from Alibaba. But you have to remember that you can add things to negotiate depending on the product that you are going to import. So whatever is applicable here, you can do that and apply to your negotiation. The first thing that I negotiate is the pricing simply because we wanted to get the best deal. This is one of the top priorities in negotiation is to get the best price for the product that we want to import. And for you to be able to get that, you must do your research. You must check the current market prices, the prices from different platforms so you would have an idea and you won't be taken advantage of during the negotiation process. Plus, if you really wanted things to be in your favor, then you have to do the work. And research and being prepared before the negotiation is part of that process. So I wanted to share a tip for you. You can leverage other offers. That's one powerful negotiation tactic that you can apply during the negotiation because I myself... I really love doing that. I love checking out different prices from different suppliers because most of the suppliers are willing to match or beat their competitors' offers just to secure your order. So make sure to leverage other offers as well. Next thing that I negotiate is the MOQ or the minimum order quantity, especially if it's too high. You are going to see this to suppliers' product listing. But you have to remember that you don't need to follow that MOQ to get their price or to get their best price. Like I've mentioned from my previous video, everything can be negotiated including the MOQ. You just have to communicate with your supplier. Just to share a story with you, I remember when I first uh, import a baby diapers, I just got 10,000 pieces which is very low compared to their published MOQ. But I got it for the price that I wanted because I demand for it and I research for it. I don't know, maybe I'm just lucky that day. But what happened is I just told them my challenge and my challenge is actually the space. I cannot accommodate the one container van of baby diapers because I don't have the space. Plus, I don't have enough money to find the one container van of baby diapers. So this is just a real experience that I wanted to share with you so you won't be overwhelmed. You won't get intimidated with those MOQ that you see on Alibaba. Again, everything can be negotiated. And we also have here the payment terms to maximize your cash flow, especially if you are eyeing for customized products that will take some time to produce you can definitely add the payment terms to your negotiation. And then the free sample, like I've mentioned from the previous videos, again, feel free to request for a sample. Most of the suppliers in Alibaba are willing to give it away for free, especially if it's not that expensive. So don't hesitate, don't be shy to request for a free sample. Also, we have here the shipping cost. I am referring to shipping cost from supplier factory going to your freight forwarder warehouse so you have to choose the nearest address of your freight forwarder so you can easily negotiate a free shipping cost so i will be uploading a separate video about freight forwarder so i can explain further next is the delivery timeline don't forget to negotiate or just to ask them the timeline of the delivery so you won't be surprised because this happened to me after paying an order I was surprised when I checked my order link that it will be dispatched after 35 days. So imagine the waiting time. It's too long for me to wait for 35 days, especially that I am using my credit card. I wanted to maximize the cash flow. That's why it's important for you to negotiate or to know the delivery timeline before you place an order to your supplier. And the next is the quantity discount. So if you are planning to buy more or maybe a large quantity of order, I would highly suggest to leverage that quantity. Because suppliers on Alibaba often offers promotions and discounts based on quantity. So make sure to keep an eye on those offers and take advantage of it when possible. 
especially if you are truly eyeing for a more quantity. And then the production update. This is highly encouraged for customized product because we wanted to make sure that we are on track in terms of production, in terms of the designs, the colors, the packaging, the materials that they are using is actually the same based on what you have agreed during the negotiation. So don't hesitate to ask them the production update so you would know that you are on track and everything is going smoothly. And then the customer support or the after sales service, actually this is not to negotiate because we already expect that they should have the customer support or after sales service. But I wanted to put it here to remind you to ask them if in case you encounter some issues about the products, what will be the resolution? I mean, thinking in advance. That's why I included the customer support or the after sales service here in the negotiation. You also have to ask them those things because that's very important. Just to make sure that you are all covered from the purchasing up to the receiving and getting the products and doing the inventory and checking the quality of your imports. These are the things that I mostly negotiate whenever I import a product. Again guys, if you think there are things that you need to add, feel free. Because it all depends on the product that you are going to import. Let's say we are done in negotiating with our supplier. What is the next step to do? Well, the next step is place your order. Now you have to document all the things that you have agreed with your supplier during the negotiation. Purchase order will serve you as a legal and structured document that outlines whatever you have agreed with your supplier. Please never ever pay your supplier without a purchase order and an invoice. The purchase order will come from you Well, the invoice will be created by your supplier based on your purchase order. By the way, I forgot to mention from the last step which is the negotiation, make sure that all your communication, especially negotiation, will be documented on Alibaba Message Center. In the case of filing of dispute or maybe you have issues with your supplier, the Alibaba team can reference based on what was communicated in the platform since they have an access to it and they can pinpoint who is telling the truth, you or the supplier. So make sure that all your communication will be documented on Alibaba Message Center. In the case that your supplier wants to communicate outside the platform, that's okay. Based on my experience, they wanted to communicate outside the platform because the Alibaba Message Center is quite slow, especially if they are sending big files like videos and Excel files with a lot of designs and pictures on it. That's okay as long as you document it through the purchase order. This is the details that I write down to my purchase order. As you can see, there is the product details. Under that, the PO number, purchase order date, product name, order quantity, price, specification, and then free sample for reference. I also include that to my purchase order just to make sure that everything is aligned to my supplier. And then the shipment details, make sure that you input the shipping cost, the shipping code, shipping address, shipping days, as well as the ENCO terms. And then last but not the least, on my PO, you will see the payment details, which is more on the discounts that we have agreed upon, and then the total amount plus the payment breakdown. Since I usually use my credit cards when doing the importing, I wanted to make sure that my card will be charged accordingly. That's why I also input the payment breakdown. But then again, guys, you may do your own thing. This is just a guidance coming from my end. I am not an expert here. I just wanted to let you know how I do it. Maybe somehow I can guide you on how you can start your business through the importing. Here's the sample purchase order from my import last year. Like I've said to you, I'm just using the Excel file to document what was agreed with my supplier. You would see here the product details. Hilton pillow, double lining with handbags. Make sure to specify everything here on the PO, the colors, the sizes, the weight, the quantity, and the amount. Then the shipment details. I will be sharing a separate discussion about how the shipping works in terms of importing. Plus, you can also see here the payment breakdown just to make sure that my card won't decline. Also here, 
I provided pictures of the product that I am going to import from them. Again, just to make sure that we are on the same page and to avoid misunderstanding and to have a better and easy experience in terms of the importing process. The last step is about making payments. Before you pay or click the pay button on Alibaba, make sure that your invoice matches your purchase order. And don't forget to check the payment link before paying your supplier. Make sure that the payment link reflects the product that you are purchasing because there are suppliers that are using different product link to increase the number of sold for that product. That's okay if you are really trusting the supplier and you have been transacting with them for a long time. But if not, please make sure that the product image is accurate based on what you are going to import. And then request the purchase order or your invoice to be attached on the payment link as a supporting document of your transaction to them. And last but not the least here, under the payment link review is the shipment terms. Just double check if the timeline of the delivery is correct based on what you have agreed plus the shipping address. Make sure that everything is correct. And as part of my practice, after paying my supplier on Alibaba, I do extend the receiving time. Both the buyer and the seller can extend the delivery once for 15 days. I do this to have an extra 15 days before the trade assurance protection starts. Your order will be protected for 30 days under the trade assurance. So when you extend the receiving time, it will give you an additional 15 days. That's why it's important for me because sometimes there are delays in importing shipment and this will give me an extra time to do my inventory before the trade assurance expires. And that's how I do the importing process. I will be sharing more information about importing like for example, the freight forwarder, the shipping process, like how do I ship products from China, from Vietnam, from Brazil, from US, going here to the Philippines. Plus, as promised, I will be sharing suppliers with their products so you can check out yourself. I really hope that I was able to serve you. I was able to provide a valuable information. Again, I will do my best to share valuable and high quality content for everybody. Thank you so much again, guys. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and please share your learnings. I mean, you know those things because it's meant to be shared.